There's always that one movie, isn't there? Any cinephile probably has a list of their favorite movies memorized like the back of their hand. Maybe it's not a literal numbered list or even a very long one, but when somebody asks you what some of your favorite movies are, if you're a lover of all things cinema, you probably don't have to think very hard about them. Perhaps you'll have a detailed, comprehensive essay for each of your favorites, analyzing the micro and the macro and the intent behind every frame. Or maybe it's just a feeling you get from the movies themselves, and you can describe every emotion you felt or still feel whenever you watch them. Or maybe it's a case of Marge and her potatoes. I just think they're neat. Whatever the reason, you don't really need a reason to find a movie one of your favorites. If it resonates with you, that's more than enough. Then there are those special kind of movies. The ones that come along at certain points in your life and, cliche as it sounds, change you. It doesn't have to be your all-time favorite movie. Maybe it's not even one you'd consider a favorite. But something about it stuck with you long after you finished it. Maybe it defied your expectations in such a way that really surprised you. Maybe it represented a shift in your childhood. Maybe it kind of forced you to examine yourself and the way you look at media as a whole. There is one such movie for me, and it's not hyperbole to say that if I hadn't taken a chance on it, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. I guess the best way I can start describing it is with a very hyperbolic statement. This is the story of how I died. Tangled is the 2010 retelling of the classic Grimm Brothers fairy tale, Rapunzel, made by Walt Disney Animation Studios. It takes the basic concept of a girl with extremely long blonde hair, confined to a tower by her evil mother figure, but with a few twists. Rather than attract the attention of a prince, Rapunzel finds her sheltered life shaken by the sudden arrival of a wanted thief named Flynn Rider, who has just made off with the nearby kingdom's greatest treasure, the tiara of their lost princess. Yearning to explore the world outside her tower, Rapunzel blackmails Flynn into taking her to the kingdom to see a special ceremony held every year on her birthday, where the kingdom releases floating lanterns in honor of their princess, who was stolen almost 18 years prior. Flynn reluctantly agrees, and the rest of the movie sees them on a sort of buddy romance road trip, filled with excitement, danger, and genuine earnestness that forever changes them both. Especially once Rapunzel starts to put two and two together on just who this lost princess really is. Are we starting to connect the dots? I know what you're probably asking. What's so special about Tangled? Isn't it like the 50th princess movie Disney's made so far? Well, first of all, this was their 10th, thank you very much. And second, even before it came out, the development of Tangled was one of the more... unique productions that Disney had ever done up to that point. The film began life in the mid-90s when Disney artist Glenn Keane started developing it as he animated on Tarzan. By the early 2000s, he pitched his idea for Rapunzel to Michael Eisner, who agreed to greenlight it under the condition it be computer animated. You see, by this point, CG animation was doing leaps and bounds better box office than traditionally animated films, with the frontmost success being a little indie darling you may have heard about by the name of It's kind of easy to forget 20 years later, after all the memes, spin-offs, and subpar sequels. But the first Shrek was a cultural phenomenon, managing to balance cynical jabs at Disney's monopoly on fairy tales with the genuine arc of the titular character as he learns to let his guard down and accept friendship and love from others who are also shunned by society. Look, I'm not the one with the problem, okay? It's the world that seems to have a problem with me. People take one look at me and go, Ah, help, run! A big, stupid, ugly ogre. I could go off on why Shrek holds up so well two decades later, but that's not why we're here today. Besides, that's what Shafrilis' channel is for. The downside to how fresh Shrek was in 2001 was that not long after came the many, 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 many imitators. Disney themselves were not immune to this imitation, and Glenn Keane's Rapunzel was soon retooled from a straightforward retelling of the fairy tale to a Shrek-like fractured retelling that saw a pair of modern-day teens in San Francisco. Wow. San Francisco. Getting swapped or body swapped with the Princess Rapunzel and her prince with many shenanigans to ensue. Also, I think Rapunzel got turned into a squirrel at some point, too? I don't know, man, this movie sounded buckwild. 
The film, retitled Rapunzel Unbraided, would halt production constantly for rewrites, as Keen admitted he didn't feel comfortable with the redirection, and the original 2007 release window was changed to 2009. Ironically, the most high-profile Disney movie to release in 2007 would have a similar premise to Unbraided. Minus the whole body swap and squirrel thing. Not long after Eisner was booted and disgraced groper John Lasseter named new chief creative officer for Disney and Pixar Animation, Keane was encouraged to go back to his original idea for a more straightforward retelling. But in 2008, he would have to bow out of the director's chair due to a heart attack, but would stay on as an executive producer and character animation supervisor. I didn't follow the production of what would eventually become Tangled very closely. But there were a number of factors that would shape my initial hostility towards it when the admittedly bad first teaser trailer dropped. I've alluded elsewhere to my time spent as a cynical, pretentious teenager around the beginning of the 2010s. But this is where that pretentious cynicism would reach its peak. The teen culture that talked about Disney back then was mostly populated by those who had a severe case of back in my dayism. Traditional animation was always better than CGI, High School Musical and Disney Channel in general were spawn of Satan that made Walt Disney roll in his grave, and on weekends we would work in why Twilight was the bane of all creative literature some way or another. It's not uncommon to have this kind of phase when you're a teen, where you form very black and white statements over media as a whole, and tend to prefer the stuff you grew up on to whatever is currently popular. And whenever somebody you liked had an opinion that something was bad or going to be bad, you went along with it without question. All this meant that when Tangled was coming out and the marketing was hyping up the comedy and the more contemporary feel of the characters, a lot of classical Disney fans were convinced it was going to suck. And I was right there with them. There were other little contributing factors to this too. Like the name change from Rapunzel to Tangled, in a blatant attempt to appeal to a young male market after Princess and the Frog performed below expectations. Or the reputation of Disney animation as a whole, at the time, not being very strong compared to Pixar. The crux of it all, though, was that I was something of a douchebag. And I'm not saying that I went into this movie and a hundred minutes later I was a completely better person who never made a mistake again. And suddenly, he wasn't racist anymore. But I will tell you just from memory alone, that the film freak that walked into the theater with his sisters to see Tangled, and the film freak who walked out again, do feel like two slightly different people. I'm not entirely certain why I had such a hate on for Tangled anyway, because it's not like I was one of those teens who hated Disney as a whole. I enjoyed Princess and the Frog when it came out. I still liked all the classics I grew up with. And Disneyland was, and still is, my place. There was just something about it my 16-year-old mind couldn't sanction. Something that I would angrily hold on to up until I saw that it was getting good reviews on sites like Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb. See, I was also something of a flake back then and based most of my opinions on general consensus at the time. See my video about Batman and Robin for more info. Even then, I would stubbornly hold on to some animosity towards the film up until I saw it. I can remember that day in vivid little segments. It wasn't long after Christmas, and I spent most of the day leading up to our trip to the movies playing video games, and we ended up going to a theater that was kind of out of the way from where we usually go, probably because our parents wanted to watch the True Grit remake that might have only been playing in certain theaters. So there I was, sat between my sisters in an unfamiliar theater, and slowly but surely letting myself get into the film. I was still wary, but I had to admit early on that I was enjoying myself. The setup was compelling. The dynamic between Rapunzel and her mother, Gothel, was creepily realistic, and Maximus's rivalry with Flynn Rider was, and still is, pretty hysterical. I think what also drew me in was the somewhat different pacing the movie had compared to other films like it. As I was starting to get more cognizant of pacing in films, I began to really appreciate the kind of movies that took their time and established either the characters or the mood. It's what made me consider Disney movies like Pinocchio or The Jungle Book as among my top tier favorites. And Tangled to this day has something different about its pacing to me. We spend a lot of time in the beginning in a simple and singular location, Rapunzel's Tower, with the only break being Flynn Rider scenes after he steals the tiara. Not long after Flynn evades capture, however, He's knocked out by Rapunzel, and we spend an inordinate amount of time with simple dialogue scenes between her and Flynn or her and Gothel. And a lot of great character animation and interaction comes from them. What I really 
badly want for this birthday? Actually, what I wanted for a quite a few birthdays. Okay. You know how I feel about the mummy. Blah, 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 blah. It's very annoying. I'm just teasing. You're adorable. I love you so much, darling. This kind of lackadaisical approach to the first act is something I admire whenever a movie manages to do it right for me. It's why the first Hobbit movie is my personal favorite of the trilogy, since it dedicates a lot of time to establishing character and character motivation in the Shire, culminating in Bilbo's leap of faith and descent into the unknown. I'm going on an adventure! This same establishment of character and motivation is present in Tangled, albeit in a much snappier way. Rapunzel establishes her desire to see the floating lanterns that appear exclusively on her birthday. I have to know what they are. Flynn establishes his superficial desire to attain wealth. Guys, I want a castle. And Gothel establishes her desire to keep Rapunzel locked up forever. Enough of the lights, Rapunzel! You are not leaving this tower! Ever! And with the added nugget of gross manipulation. Oh, great. Now I'm the bad guy. To this day, I attain the first 30 minutes of Tangled as one of the best openings to any Disney movie on structure alone. But it was the literal leap of faith Rapunzel takes to start her journey that really sold me on this movie. As a brief tangent, I think one of Tangled's shortcomings is that, as a musical, it's not one of Disney's bests. I still like the songs, don't get me wrong, and taking a more folk-pop approach to match Mandy Moore's style helped differentiate her from the other Disney princesses. But if you took all the songs out of this movie, I don't feel like you'd be missing much. Well, except two. The first is a reprise of the first song, When Will My Life Begin, or after Rapunzel first sets foot. By the way, Quentin Tarantino really loved this movie, Outside the Tower, and sings a triumphant reprise that builds and builds as she runs out of the glen and into the forest as the camera sweeps and she belts out the last verse. And that was when I let go of my cynic facade and admitted to myself that this movie was pretty great. I unzip me! It's all coming back! It's all coming back! I hate you! It's all coming back! I'll freely admit, if the movie wasn't a musical, I don't know how you'd replicate that cathartic freedom so well. Oh yeah, and we'll get to the second song a bit later. After this scene, the movie could basically do no wrong for me, and I was hooked. I let myself be fully enraptured in Rapunzel's journey to see the floating lanterns and become just as endeared to her as the pub thug she wins over by appealing to their sense of desire. Find your humanity! Haven't any of you ever had a dream? I wanted to be... a lumberjack! The longer I watched this movie, the more my sense of cynicism faded, which was a rare gift a movie could give me back then. Like, even when I saw Princess and the Frog, the cynic side of me won over by the time of the ending, and I started moaning, Why did he turn into a star? That's not realistic. Why didn't Mama Odie just tell them they could get married and that would turn them back to humans? Why is Lottie literally grooming a child? Okay, that last one wasn't one of my nitpicks, but apparently some people thought she was literally endorsing child grooming with that throwaway joke. Like, seriously guys, come on. And I'm not saying there's nothing to nitpick or legitimately take umbrage with Tangled, but I just didn't care while I was watching it. I adored nearly every scene. The fireside confession Rapunzel and Flynn have where they reveal parts about themselves they previously hadn't told anyone else before. So, Eugene Fitzherbert, huh? I'll spare you the sob story of poor orphan Eugene Fitzherbert. It's a little bit of a... that's a little bit of a downer. The way Rapunzel wins over Maximus and does this little upside down tilt with her head that I always thought was super cute. The montage in the kingdom of... Where Rapunzel takes in all the sights, tastes, and sounds of the city, set to one of Alan Menken's best individual tracks. Everything, <clears throat> everything about this movie just clicked with me. I will say, there are elements of Tangled's animation that haven't aged the best, like the characters can look a little plasticky at times. But the character animation is still bar none, especially in the preamble to the lantern scene, 
where we see the king and queen prepare themselves to mark yet another year without their daughter, and the king is silently weeping while his poor wife comforts him, even though she's just as morose as her husband. God, though! The character animation for these two was stellar even in the opening. Look at how soft their expressions are with Rapunzel. Look at the water in the king's eyes when he thinks his wife is going to die from complications with her pregnancy. We get so much information from them without either of them having one word of dialogue. They'd eventually get voices in the TV series, where Clancy Brown and Julie Bowen both do fantastic jobs. But there is something truly remarkable about how their silent roles in the film still leave us feeling in complete sympathy towards them. This little exchange is only topped by the other song I feel you definitely couldn't do this movie without. If there was still any trace of the 16-year-old film freak the cynic before this scene, it was gone during it. The feeling of being engulfed in light, complemented with the soft and odd vocals of Mandy Moore, and the smitten and vulnerable performance from Zachary Levi, both of these characters have achieved what they set out to do, and the song marks a turning point in their relationship from reluctant travel companions to friends to something more. This is best shown when Rapunzel offers him the tiara that, in an earlier scene, Gothel told her was all he wanted from their relationship. However, he puts it aside and focuses completely on her. How she's achieved her lifelong dream and is the happiest she's ever been, which is saying a lot. And how he doesn't really know what's next after this, but as long as she's involved, he'll be content. A sentiment she returns as they sing the last chorus together. It's such a powerful moment and beautiful scene that instantly shot its way into the pantheon of greatest Disney songs and sequences for me. And the reason why this scene wouldn't work nearly as well without the song is because I've actually seen what happens when you take it out. The level in Kingdom Hearts 3, based on Tangled, is actually one of my favorites in the game. I tend to prefer the worlds in Kingdom Hearts that do more of an original story rather than repeat the plot of the movie wholesale. And Kingdom Hearts 3 could be especially bad at this. I'm looking at you, Arendelle. And there are plenty of awkward moments where scenes from the movie will play out, with Sora, Donald, and Goofy inserted somewhere off to the side. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't charmed as hell by wandering the beautifully rendered forest with Rapunzel and Flynn, and getting to do fun things with her like splash around in water, dance with her in the kingdom square, or gather birds for her to sing with. Look, you can call me a simp, but whatever. I gotta make me happy! Anyway, though the game is able to replicate the lantern scene surprisingly well with just the in-game graphics, the scene loses a lot of what made it so romantic and character-fulfilling by omitting the song, and having a more bombastic score kind of misses the point of the original scene. Sure, it's pretty, but I See the Light was much less bombastic and more… personal. Introspective, even. And it's not like they couldn't include the song. They had two songs from Frozen haphazardly slapped onto the Arendelle world for no reason. Look, I like Frozen fine, but what the f*** is this? I never see you anymore. Years Come passed and we barely it's ever like saw each other. Away. Then, finally, it was time we for her coronation. The climax of the movie itself is also interesting compared to the other Disney films too. It's as personal as many of the other scenes in the beginning of the film, where the three leads are finally in the same room, and conscious, and where the power dynamics of Gothel and Rapunzel finally pay off. No! You were wrong about the world, and you were wrong about me, and I will never let you use my hair again! The one real critique I have in hindsight is that Eugene being the one to cut her hair takes away Rapunzel's agency, and she probably should have been the one to do it herself in a last act of defiance to Gothel. But either way, we get a pretty gruesome death scene. Of course, the reason Rapunzel wouldn't cut her own hair is because she needed it to heal a dying Eugene. But that gets taken care of through a pretty decent reference to the original fairy tale. The bird's right! Look! It be the tear of the goofy goobers! Did I ever 
tell you I've got a thing for brunettes. Oh. Eugene! And to wrap things up in a nice little bow, Rapunzel even gets to reunite with her real parents, who, still without any word of dialogue, convey everything that need be said with their faces alone. <laughs> Suffice to say, Tangled became one of my little mini-obsessions not long after watching it. No matter how much time had passed, no matter what else was going on with my life, my mind would go back to that movie, and I'd feel this strange sensation of warmth in my heart every time. I guess it's what you'd refer to when you think of a comfort movie. I would eventually see it again around my birthday just before it left theaters. But I always regret to this day I never saw it in 3D just for the lanterns alone. My need to be sated by the movie soon extended itself from finding simple clips on YouTube to actively seeking out other people who talked about it. And this was where IMDB came in. For those blessed with ignorance, the Internet Movie Database used to have forums for nearly every movie and category on the site, and Tangled was no exception. So thirsty for more Tangled, I would spend months stalking the boards and reading people's conversations about the movie. And it got to the point where I couldn't be content to just ghost it any longer. I had to be part of the conversation. So I bit the bullet, got my own fancy Yahoo Mail account, and used it to sign up for IMDb under the pseudonym FilmFreak94 on April 30th, 2011. And that was the day, little that I knew, that my life changed forever. Up until this point, I'd never really partaken in an online community to this extent. I had my old YouTube account, sure, but I wasn't really friends with anybody. And the way adults always talked about creepy old men using sites like MySpace and Facebook to prey on children meant that I wasn't going anywhere near them. With the Tangled board, however, I was near instantly accepted as a Disney nerd, and I was always eager to get back in there and have lengthy discussions with all the other nerds about Tangled and Disney and everything else under the sun. We would have lengthy arguments as to whether Mother Gothel ever loved Rapunzel or not, discuss how the movie held up in comparison to the other Disney classics, and just share any random fanfic or AMV that we or anyone else around the internet made. And this is where I reveal a painful and embarrassing fact about myself. Oh boy. I actually did make a few Tangled AMVs back in the day on my old YouTube account. Which you will never find and I will never show you. Okay, just one second. But the topics of discussion varied even beyond movie opinions. We'd play little ranking games, two members arranged a forum wedding a la Eugene and Rapunzel, only to elope later on, and I even started a whole thread wherein I talked about the Disney villains and what I thought of them. Why? Because! It got to the point where a few of us ended up taking over the board and talking about completely random shit. Some IMDB mod would end up deleting them for being too off-topic, even though we said it was off-topic. So we ended up moving to another site. Goodbye, everyone! I'll remember you all in therapy! And for one reason or another, it ended up being just me and two other friends left from the old Tangled board. I'll admit, talking about them makes me really miss some of the others. Kind of like reminiscing about old high school buddies you haven't seen since you graduated. But there's one member in particular that always stood by my side, and I'm forever grateful she did. Remember when I said before about movies that change your life? Well, if it weren't for Tangled and the way it won me over, I probably never would have met my wife. Of all the members on the board, one of the few I would always love to hear from no matter what was the Rebexorcist. This cool Canadian girl who made art and always had the raddest opinion on movies and video games. There was something about us that clicked near instantly, and as we moved on to other sites, I still considered her with a certain degree of coolness. That's not to say she was the only one I truly liked. Hey Carrie, love ya. But it was different with her. The conversations came more natural. Our interests seemed to align even to the point where we started crushing over the same fictional characters. And there was this warm feeling I began to feel around her that I couldn't quite feel from anyone else. 
The same kind of feeling I'd associated with Tangled before, but better. And reflecting on all that was when it hit me. It's not like I lay awake at night thinking about her. Uh oh. I don't mean to bore you with my whole life story or anything, but suffice to say there was a lot of pining once I found out how bad I had it for my internet friend. Like, really bad. And no matter how much I would go back and forth in my mind as to how it wouldn't work and we were better off as friends, I would inevitably go back to that feeling in my heart that I just couldn't ignore. This was a person that I could be incredibly close with, confide in. This was a person I trusted more than a lot of people I knew in closer proximity to me, and she lived near 3,000 miles away. I never suspected for a thousand years, though, that she would ever feel the same way. And yet, things happen, and life can hit you in mysterious ways, like a bolt from the sky or breath of fresh air or... And nine years to the day since I started that IMDb account, my new life officially began. I keep glancing at my wedding ring as I write the script. A ring that stemmed from years of dating long distance, stemming from a simple question from her on if I was busy one fateful mid-April afternoon. A question that stemmed from years of being best friends. Years of being best friends stemming from a dumb message board on a trash website. My time on that message board stemming from one simple movie. A movie I was ready to disregard completely because I thought I knew better. How old is Charles? Eleven. Going on twelve. I see. That's what my father used to call the age of not believing. What's that supposed to be? There's not a day that goes by when I don't regret the level of cynicism I had when I was 16. And again, I'm not exceptionally hard on myself or anything. Everyone's an asshole when they're a teen at some point or another. But it's that special level of cringe you can only get when you're so far removed from that kind of person you used to be. And you feel all the better for it. There's plenty more I wish I could atone for beyond just thinking a movie was going to suck. And I still made a lot of mistakes in the years that followed my first viewing of Tangled. But I think, through it all, I owe Tangled pretty much everything regarding who I am today. For being that one movie that was able to snap me out of my own smug self-importance. For being that one movie that I obsessed with to the point of making new, genuine friends from all quarters of the continent, if not the world. For being that one movie I can point to that brought me to the person I love the most. My best friend. My partner. My new dream. If I had reluctantly stayed in that cynical state I was in, stuck in the age of not believing and feeling like I had nothing to learn, nothing to enrich myself, I would have never met my wife or one of our best friends. And I certainly wouldn't be in the process of immigrating to another country to start a life with her. I honestly don't know where I'd be. Maybe I am being hyperbolic and putting too much onto one movie's shoulders. After all, it's just a movie, right? Well, no. Not to me. It's that one movie that changed my life in all the right ways. Planted a seed in the ground that continues to blossom and gleam and glow to this day. A warmth that I can share with the person I love until the day we die. So, as I said before, Tangled is the movie where that overtly cynical part of me began to die, and a better, more open me took its place, slowly but surely. That's why Tangled will always hold a special place in my heart, as that one movie that changed everything for the better. Oh yeah, and the TV show is great too, but that's probably best saved for its own video.